Welcome back everybody. It's time for another lesson. We're gonna go on to the next region and of course as I talked about last time we are going to increase the complexity in our gameplay. Before I do that I just want to give you a few quality of life tips before we start ramping things up from here. So one thing you may not have known is that if you actually scour a world map you may find little spots like this. You notice how the cursor as opposed to normally being blue it turns into red? Well, it's because there's like a little hidden thing you can find on the map. So yeah, cool. You can just scour each little world map, each little part of the region. See what you can find. So you can find some goodies here and there. See like, there's a little red bit I think I saw over there. Oh yeah, see like, uh, right there. You know, cool little hidden things like that. So, um, I know there's titles related to it. So that can always be pretty interesting. Another cool little thing you can do is, as you can see, I've got like 50k gold and you may be confused about what to spend it on. But here's something that's really valuable that you can actually buy. So if you take a look at your items, you see a bunch of stuff here. Of course, books of reincarnations, if you need to respec, are pretty cheap. But one thing that players will not necessarily know about is that, hey, you can actually send certain items to your storehouse and then you can make a setting so that you automatically retrieve say ammunition from the storehouse and it'll just come up every time you get back to a shrine so you never have to worry about running out of stuff so you know let's i'm curious how many do i have in my item box i can't carry anymore right but how many can i put in my storehouse so it looks like i have 72 i could buy 479 i'm not going to buy them because i have more than enough but you can just like put them in your storehouse and never really have to worry about retrieval of any ammunition whatsoever so really really handy and definitely worth taking a look into and of course you can get stones because stones are the best look at that i can get a bajillion stones so yeah just keep in mind you can always put things into your storehouse to buy you don't just have to put it into your item box but all right enough talk is there anything i can work with anything i should do before i progress to the next region so again i'm not going to go too crazy in terms of gear i just want the most important stuff and Let's, I, I think, let's, I'm just going to see if I have any more powerful swords. I kind of doubt it. Okay, what's my sword at right now? It's 318. They all look pretty weak. Oh, that's the older familiarity one. Yeah, okay, I think I'm fine. So my sword is good. What about my bow? I should just keep it sorted by level. All right, I got a good enough rifle. What about my equipment? Um, I want to stay at a agility for the duration of this playthrough. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm good to go. So here, watch, I'm gonna do something really complicated for the blacksmith. I think I did, I did this last time. So I'm just gonna disassemble literally everything. No hesitation, zero. And then uh, forge, cool. You can worry about forging later. Oh, actually I'm gonna forge Umbersite. Can't go wrong with that. Look at that, I got 53 Umbersight, I think. And if I want, I can take a look at the equipment that I do have. Let's see if I can get lucky with like a faster winded recovery. Again, don't spend too much time on this. I'm not going to as well. Yeah, ah, well, if I can't get it, I can't get, oh, oh, I, I can, I got it. Never mind. I got lucky. What about that life recovery and Amrita absorption? See if I can get it. I will actually spend a little bit of time getting it, because look how much number side I have. I have 122. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, Backstack damage taken, I'll pass. Elemental damage taken, sure, it's purple. Purple seems, oh, there it is. Life recovery, Umberto absorption. Um, if I can get tenacity, uh, let's see. I don't think you can get it on this. I don't actually remember where everything is for everything, but. All right, whatever. I'm good. <laughs> that's that's enough. So you know, soul cores like Gaki will make a big difference. So let's see. Yeah, there's a bunch of side missions. Feel free to do them. You'll get more guardian spirits. You'll get more rewards. There's also a chance to get hidden skills, which I have talked about. And uh, I know, for example, this mission, Shiftling's Wide Judgment. There's actually three different ways you can tackle this. So you can side with one person, side with another person, and then side with neither, and get three different outcomes to the missions as well as get helpers uh, for future missions. So it's there is actually a reason to redo some of these missions because you can get different outcomes and it can make things fun. 
But anyway, enough talk. Let's get to the next region, right? Let's just get to the next region. I'm gonna skip stuff and come on, load for me, please. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want to see cutscenes. It's taking a while. The spoopy. All right, the spoops are over. So we're just gonna go on to the next next region. Let's see if there's any hidden goodies. So look at me. Gleefully scanning until I see something red. Uh, I thought I saw it. Oh, there it is. Gimme. Yes, I get hatchets. I'm not using hatchets, but great. Let's go. It's time to play. Enough talk. So we're going to be really trying to work with the four soul cores now that we can use at our disposal. This is going to be yet another weird input thing that we're going to have to start getting used to. Because now we've got stance pre-shifting. We've got flux too. And we've got yokai ability usage, and it's just starting to get much more mechanically complex. So we're going to have to get used to switching our guardian spirits. So the way that I like to switch guardian spirits is R1 and then L2. You can, of course, if your controls are different, so make sure you adapt accordingly. But for it's basically the stance button. Switch your guardian spirit. All right. So it's L2. Don't do L2 and then R1. Doesn't really work, and it also just pulls out your bow. And it can be kind of wonky, so I like to do stance, switch my guardian spirits. And as you can see, there's kind of a, a little bit of a cooldown timer, and that cooldown timer doesn't necessarily apply to say, let's 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 see if it applies to special benefits. So the guardian spirit that I'm using, Roku Gezo, is good for anima where is it anima bonus timely guard you might see at the top of the scroll bar you see it like right over here anima bonus timely guard right wow i get four that's probably because i have aberrant soldier on there too or something but yeah so that's a lot and you might be worried hey do i lose this bonus while it's on a cooldown well let's see the answer is no it's still there even though i went on a cooldown um now obviously if i switch to the other one I shouldn't have it and I don't see I got a whole bunch I don't have that anima bonus so you don't lose the guardian spirit bonuses while you're on cooldown or anything like that it's just you can't necessarily pop yokai shift but yeah this is going to be again an avenue of complexity that we need to start getting familiar with and it's going to be pretty freaking crazy and as a reminder we are you able to now tap into four different guardian uh four different soul cores so I've got Nurakabe. I've got Aberrant Soldier, as you can see here, which I really like. And then with the other Guardian Spirit, which is a Brute type, I have Rokuro Kubi, which is very powerful, and then Koroka, which I haven't used yet, and I know many players will equate to, like, Soul Mass or something. But it's going to be difficult remembering which Guardian Spirit we're on. So are we on a Phantom type, so we can do Phantom? Are we in Brute, so we can do Brute Counters? And of course, this is just going to increase your ability to adapt to situations, but it's mechanically very challenging to remember all of this on top of other stuff. And here, give me the item, please. Thank you. Thank you for the Sacred Arrow. Can I have more? Of course, I can have more. So, yeah, we're going to get used to this. We're going to keep practicing this, and I, it's it really increases your gameplay potential tenfold. I'm right now just looking at proficiencies, seeing if I can get close to anything, and going from there. But yeah, for the most part, I am, we're just going to practice this because it's really huge while we keep focusing on good decision making. So what you can see here is... Oh, a doggo. Hello, doggo. Alright. Hello, doggo. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know. Let me stop. Okay. Here, I'm going to kick. Hey, hey. No, 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 no. Hey. Hey, hey. I tried to item cancel. <laughs> I still died. <laughs> Good decision making is always important. So, uh, yeah, don't just depend on tech to save you from everything. As you can see there, it didn't matter much. So, let's analyze what we've got here. So, there was a guy over there. You can see that fire. Um, what also is very valuable in this place, and now that we know there's a dog... We can try to kill off the dog, but we better do it quickly. As you can see, people died here, myself included. But there's also grass that we can use. So kind of stealth. Going through grass and just kind of stealthily and navigate certain areas. Let's see if this affords us an opportunity to pick off this archer. It does. No one is the wiser. Alright, let's go into the stealth grass. 
Yeah, I, I actually normally don't do this. I just blitz right through. But yeah, it can be a little bit of a handy way to help you pick off certain things. Let's see if this doggo notices. Maybe now I can take advantage of, of my ninjutsu stuff. Right? Nah, let's use shots. Oh, that was actually remarkably powerful. Oh, hey, let's be cheap. I tried. All right, let's go be cheap. <laughs> there you go, double jutsu cancel for absolute murder. But yeah, so you can see that potential and just take advantage of your surroundings, your environment. And let's murder stuff. Okay, but we haven't really felt a need to swap guardian spirits. But let's just get to work. Killing stuff, as we normally do. Blocks two all the darn time. And just perpetually murdering enemies. Okay, now let's see how I can make... Let's see if I can have this enemy be a good demonstration for a lot of our techniques. Before he dies. Isn't that crazy? Alright. I'm in Phantom, right? Okay. Come on. Well, I swapped to Brute, but he has no key. Oh, well, you're, you're not a good demonstration, buddy. But a good time to... Uh, maybe you saw it there. But a good time for you to generally switch in between Guardian Spirits and without the, like, whole wonkiness of potentially risking, say, aiming your weapon is, again, when you're kind of committed to an animation, uh, animation let's say, with, like, Morning Moon, because, you know, you can't really aim when Morning Moon is happening, but you can the moment after. So that's generally when I do it. When I know I'm committed to an animation, I switch my Guardian Spirits. So kind of use the same skills that you've been developing when it comes to shift... Uh, stance pre-shifting But all right, let's just pick a guy off All right, I'm sheath as you may recall Got that yokai ability Cancel type stuff in order to help me Address any shortcomings I may have in terms of overall character speed. So it looks like I got another point Let's see. What do I want to put it in? I've got a lot of different choices now and so it can be fairly tricky in all honesty, to pick certain stuff, uh, there's a lot of cool things. Like I think this this ability, light light and darkness, is absolutely fantastic. It's an amazing follow up to Shadow Sword, and is so good. Um, there's also Sword of Discernment, which is actually really good too. Like this is actually very difficult to pick. EI Quick Draw Three is really handy and makes it so you don't have to worry too much about sheath cancels. I still do sheath cancels anyway, but. Yeah, Quick Draw 3 is very good for the sword. Tiger Sprint is a cool ability, but will probably be a little difficult for you to understand. Same with Sword of Meditation. Water Shadow is another parry, and I do like it, but again, to get the real benefits of the parries and all the concepts of the parries, we're going to have to wait a little bit. I don't actually think we're, I'm going to get the parries right away. They're great, don't get me wrong. They're all really awesome, but in terms of biggest bang for the buck, I actually believe Sword of Discernment will be one of the most valuable skills that you can possibly get. This is an ability that looks very underwhelming, looks really simple, and it doesn't even do that much damage. But if you look at the tooltip for it, it staggers the enemy by bashing them down with the sheath and then follows up with a downward slash. The ability is actually faster than is suggested in the tooltip. And it's actually an ability that's really cheap if you know how to abuse it. You can make enemies just block, and yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable. I'll try to showcase its power, but it's skill customization. It is right now the only thing in L1 square, so we're just adding yet again another input. Yeah, there's Leaf Glide, but I've barely used the parries in this entire playthrough. We'll get to defensive parries and all that stuff soon enough, but right now we just need to focus on this. Parry time is just going to be yet another headache on top of the switching between Guardian Spirits and stuff like that, but okay. Let's just continue to explore the level, see what I can find. Um, where's the Kodama? Kodama is over there, so let's just drop down. Oh, I could have dropped down over here too. Get the Zamrtha, see if it gives me anything. And yeah, so we're gonna just keep mixing in, adding the different layers here and there to facilitate our gameplay. And I haven't even really used many soul cores yet, but man, hopefully you can start to see where all these different inputs, all these different things can really start to come into play. And 
as I've said before, it's very important for you to make sure your decision making is good because that is what will carry you more than anything. Of course, being aware of all these concepts will undoubtedly help. Oh, hey, kitty. It will undoubtedly help you to be aware of this, but if you're not making good decisions, the tech won't save you, as I showed in the very beginning. Okay, so this is interesting because we have a whole other thing going on. So we've got a searchlight more or less in front of us. And we've got some enemies that you may recognize. So we've got the Yamanba, but what is pulling in the searchlight? There it is. Hoot hoot. Good old owl. So what you can do is you can shoot it. But now everything is aggroed! You can run away. So yeah, this is actually a massive instance of the Dark Realm. And if you want, as you can see, there's a health attached to it. You can shoot it. And enemies will come over to your position. But we can just shoot it away. Hey, what's going on, man? I, I don't like this. You can go away. Please. Alright, and now the owl is gone. And this will dissipate the Dark Realm. Ta-da! But yeah, if you're in that searchlight, enemies will actually just gravitate towards your position. Okay. There's a Gaki. I'm gonna be super cheap. Item cancel time. Look at that! Double Jutsu cancel. So cheap. Gotta love it. Oh, hey! Boom, boom, boom! Remember, and boom! I missed, but that's okay, because no one cares. Anyway. Look at that, look at that combat speed. Alright, let's go in. Always doing the same stuff. Look at that, super powerful and effective. She's canceling, so I don't stay there as long. Yo, what you got? Yo, where are you at? Okay, what you got? What you got? I'm coming for you. Yeah, you're dead. Goodbye. All right, we got lots of things to loot. Oh God! We got big Scalabro. Is this the first time we've seen big Scalabro? Woo! All right, let's swap up to brute stuff. Oh shoot! Swap guardian spirits! Ah! They like it. It's difficult when you get all this to manage. Oh no! Get away from me! Oh. Heal up. Obviously, Brute would have a little bit more difficulty with that, but it's still possible. Whee! Alright, I need a better scenario to showcase the value of switching your Guardian Spirit. So I'll actually play in Brute for a while. I generally stick with Phantom because... Oh, oh, oh! I like this... Eee! Powerful. I stick with Phantom because it's like, oh no, what if there's a burst attack that'll quickly murder me and I, and I need to respond immediately? Well, I don't want to have to be in, say, Brute or Feral or whatever and then swap to Phantom. I want to make sure, hey, worst case scenario, I'm already in Phantom. And so then it's just, I have to focus on reacting, but as opposed to swapping and messing up inputs and stuff like that. But that's something that just takes practice in all honesty. And we'll have to get used to it. And every single burst counter type does have a use. There are certain attacks that generally fare better with you countering with the Brute and others that do well with, say, Feral or Phantom. So it is, again, really just going to depend. Would you look at that? Look at that fire application. Very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Oh, we got a Sudama over here. See what I can give you. Uh, I can give you rifle ammunition, or I can... Oh, I can give you that Kasari Gama. Here, here, take the Kusa. Can I get a better sword, please? Pretty, please? Just casually sheath canceling while I'm waiting. Throne Crusher Cannon? Sh 
Sure. That's great. All right, we got a big boom. Got a boomstick. All right. A Prince of our Governor's Gauntlets. I'm guessing they're a lot heavier. Yeah, they are. Okay, so pass on that. And then let's just continue some progress. Did I come from here? Yeah, I came from there. Okay, so just go over here. This is all new territory. Oh, look, shortcut. We got ourselves a good shortcut. Now let's see what else we got. There's a shrine. I don't remember if there's a shrine nearby. Oh, but here's an enemy. Let's show you the value of switching guardian spirits. Assuming this will actually qualify. All right, I need him to be at low health, right? Now here, I'm gonna switch to Brute in anticipation of him doing his desperation attack. And Brute is really good at rewarding you for knowing what your enemy is going to do. As you saw there, it was just like, I knew, hey, there was that brief pause in animation where I know he's gonna go for the gap, and like there's a g gap before he goes in. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw the Brute preemptively. And I just shut it down as soon as it started, which of course feels great. So you, knowing your enemy's attacks and and being able to switch to the appropriate guarding spirit is so awesome. So you're definitely gonna wanna do it. Looks like I missed an Umrtha thing, so I'm gonna get that. Oh, it's up there. I forget how to get up there, I'll figure it out. la di da di da where are you at? Probably around here, oh, okay, I found the way. Got a Kodama, treasure chest, an enemy. Like, you just start kind of getting used to all this. All the general navigation of a level. It's not too shabby. I'm also very familiar with this level, too. Because, uh, I have played it quite a bit. But, alright. Let's have some fun. Let's go! Just using the brute counter casually. Oh, shoot! Hey! I said no. Oops. All right, we're gonna back off. Oh shoot, there are multiple enemies. Heal up, let's go. Oh, get the other guy. Pick off the weaker ones. All right, where are you at? There you are. All right, low stance, Adachi, you can block that. Oh! What you got? What you got? Ooh, let's be skillful. Go in. Let's go one, two. Oh shoot, do I not have enough anima? Oh! Ooh, that was that was a little too risky. But yeah, I switched to Brute in order to try to counter him before he could pull anything meaningful off. Luckily, uh, I was able to down him a bit before anything too crazy happened. But that was admittedly a bit of luck. But holy cow, there's a lot of things I have not looked through. <laughs> there's so much to go through in this game. All right, there's a Kodama nearby, right? Yep, smash things. Thank goodness for the Kodama sense. And got Amrita over here. You can see what someone died to over here. I guess they got cut down by the same enemies that we did. And let's just keep going. Right now we've just fought mostly human enemies. Very few yokais. But on Yokai with that have different timings, you, you do want to switch your guardian spirits all the time. Alright, I think we're getting pretty close to a shrine. There's a Gaki, you know the rule. Give it a good old boom. Alright, we're gonna actually encounter a new enemy type momentarily. As you can see, uh, we've got an enemy there. We've also got an archer in the distance, so let's just pick off the archer so I don't have to worry about it at all. Wow, oh, crap! Okay, you know what? Alright, so let's see what it's doing. It's got a weird hop, it's got a bunch of different heads. Okay, it looks like it spews out a bunch of orb thingies. Alright, it does that weird hop. Okay, one hit. Dude, that's a beefy arm. Alright, here's the hop, so I know I can go in. By the way, if you hit its thing's heads... Ooh, what the laser beams? If you hit those heads, you'll stagger it. See that? Oh, shoot! So that's the burst attack. Now, if I had swapped to Brute, 
and notice that animation, I could stop it before it started, or I could have waited until I felt safe to do the Phantom. Again, it's going to depend on what you're feeling. Let's see if I can demonstrate the value of switching beforehand. Ooh! Got that roll. Let's use some Guardian stuff. Bonky bonk. No big deal. Oh yeah, you guys, I haven't even talked about the whole... Here, uh, let's see. Let me show you the value of life recovery armor to absorption. I'm gonna let him shoot me. Okay. Gotten shot, alright? Let me show you how quickly my life's gonna go back up now. Alright, look. Just passive healing. One, two, three. It just got a little bit of heals. That's it. Like, that wasn't- Here, look! Just passive healing. That, that just- just- just any time I absorb Amrita, I get that. So it's pretty cool. Alright, we should be close to the shrine. Um, that's from the shortcut. Yeah, so, got already good amount of information. We're gonna have to iron out a bit more of these concepts as we keep playing, but I think that's a good chunk of information for now. So, Thank you guys for watching, hope this lesson was helpful, and my character as always will see you guys next time.